we've had an awful lot of people been asking questions how they can uh, take advantage of some of the things that we see. And, and it's quite honestly, I see a, a, tr a pretty big shift coming. Uh, that's just me. This is my crystal ball that I'm, I'm looking at. I've been through this many, many times before. And I think that uh, there's opportunity is going to be absolutely incredible in the next four, five, six, seven years. And I, I think it's going to culminate for us. We're accumulating real estate properties for 2023, 2024. And the reason we're doing that is that I think that there is a shift from financial assets to real assets. Financial assets are stocks and bonds. You know, they are claims on real assets. And we're seeing a shift to real assets. Real assets are really the basis of wealth. They're things. They're the real things. They're houses, they're farms, they're lumber, they're fields, they're forests, they're mines, they're um, agriculture, they're, they're things, they're, they're plants and equipment. We're going to start seeing a shift to that rather than financial manip manipulations of, uh, of uh, uh, budgets and, and uh, stock buybacks and, and lowering of debt, you know, interest rates, refinances. What we're going to see is actually people doing actually doing things, and and people can take advantage of this. Then the real thing is that you're going to see an explosion across the country in uh, values of housing, but. In the meantime, we may very well have a correction. You know, we're getting, I've talked about this in the last video, we talked about a uh, period of vulnerability for correction, which means that if you have something that you're going to sell, you need to do it now. You need to get it sold, you, you know, and say, oh, well, you know, I'm waiting for the peak. Look, at, nobody gets the peak, but some people get very, very close to it. And um, when you've done really, really well, it's time to ring the bell. So take your profits. You know, we're not going to spend the money. We're just going to shift it into a different asset class. So, so you know, so spend, you know, buy it, you know, sell it, buy something else. So all we're doing is just rearranging the portfolio. But I, you know, personally, in looking at my crystal ball, I think that we're going to have this shift from financial assets to real assets. And what does what does that mean? I think that you're going to see commodities going up. I think that you see probably at the very, very low end, uh, the, you know, they've just they've had a terrible time. Coal mines, gold mines, silver mines, uh, copper, all, all the building blocks of, of what makes things around the world and oil have really uh, had a terrible time. And it doesn't mean that they bought them because I think they may have one more time if we have any kind of turmoil. Of course, uh, things slow down, and that'll be a tremendous buying opportunity. I think that you can buy commodities, but I'm not a commodities broker, so talk talk to your uh, investment advisor on something. Like that. But for me, if I think that commodities are going to go up, single family homes are all made out of commodities. So why wouldn't you buy something in your neighborhood, something that's going to turn you an income that you can turn into a business for yourself and actually get uh, income? So you can pay all your all your costs on it and still get a surplus. So you actually get an income and you can grow that income. So as the value of these commodities go up, so if you start seeing copper go up, if you start seeing silver go up, if you start seeing oil go up, or if you start seeing the cost of lumber go up, all these things are in single family homes. So we want to buy these single family homes. So we get to, we get the benefit of two cycles. You get the benefit of the fact that we still are in the middle middle cycle. Of a, of a housing cycle. A housing cycle is 18 and a half years long. Now, we think that uh, I think that we're getting pretty close to having a correction in an ongoing bull market. We have a period of vulnerability. We've talked about this before. And that typically is, uh, runs about seven and a half to nine years uh, after the end of the cycle. Well, that period is now. For the next year and a half, we're in this, we're in this vulnerability period. So if there's an economic shock, uh, we could feel it. And of course, um, you know, in 1981, 1982, that was a correction in an ongoing bull market. It was pretty, it was pretty brutal, but it was nonetheless was a correction in an ongoing bull market. Uh, 2001, um, you know, they had turmoil in the, in the stock market, hardly anything at all. We, we really weren't in that period of vulnerability. Uh, so, um, I think we're probably going to be a little closer to the 1981, 82 than the 2001. So I think we could have a we could have a, a pretty significant correction. Uh, and, and in some parts of the country where have really uh, prices have just exploded to the ridiculous, I think they're going to have real real problems. Here in my local market, I mean we're in Maricopa County, we have so many people moving here. Uh, the use factor. So we've we've got we've had in recently a balance between um, rentals and price. So we have use and, and 
price factors uh, staying well in balance. Uh, just recently, the price is starting to get out, and so that's a warning to me. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it can't be um, resolve itself, but it is nonetheless a warning to me. So uh, we just need to be aware of that. But if we have a correction, that is going to be scary. You know, your job's going to get tough. Business is going to get tough. Um, you're going to be really worried. Best time in the world to buy. Best time. You, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, when I tell you it's time to buy, you're going to say, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. It's really scary. I don't want to do that. I'm going to tell you that bad times do not last. Good times go on for like seven, eight, nine years. Bad times go on for two or three. So we're going to get in the middle of that, and then we're going to and we're going to buy things that uh, other people are selling, and uh, and we're going to get a really good discount, and we're going to make a fortune. We are going to make so much money uh, that we're going to do this for generations of our families. We're going to have families. Uh, you, you're going to be able to put your great grandkids through school and and and. and and stake them in businesses and send them to medical school, send them around the world to, you know, study in Spain or France or China, wherever you want to do. That's how much that's fortunes we make. But if you are not prepared for it, you can't you can't participate. If you're up to your eyeballs in debt, if you've got credit cards that are to the max, you cannot participate. You know, if you do not have reserves uh, and investable funds, you cannot participate and you are going to be left behind. So what I want you to do is go take a look at your personal finances and say, what if my business slows down? What am I going to do? And you better have a plan. You better have a plan to do this. You better, you better be able to figure out what am I going to do if, if business drops 10 or 20%. So I want you to say, well, what about my debts? What about my expenses? So the very first thing to do is get your expenses and and, uh, uh, and costs under control. You can do that. So every dollar that you save is a dollar earned. So believe me, you can kick your revenue up. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take $500, a minimum of $500 a month out of your budget. Take 500 bucks, I don't care where you get it, take $500 out and go put it in your savings account. Period, done. If you can't do that, don't watch my videos anymore. You know, cause you're, you're, you're just wasting your time. You know, this is someone who's going to make you money. We want you to get wealthy. God wants you to be wealthy. God wants you to be able to do things that you uh, can can participate and make this world a better place. And you need to be able to do these things. So if, if you're interested in doing this, go take $500 a month, put it in the bank, period, and start cutting your costs and start paying down your credit cards. So listen, this is a happy new year. That's a goal for you. First goal, we'll start talking about other goals for you, but please, if you have any questions, we are here to help you any way we possibly can. I have a staff here. This is what we do. We try and get people out of debt and, and get some get some uh, money into their pockets so that they have a better life. My very, very best to you.